All right, this is a Foley insertion on a male. The nurse first starts out by delegating to the technician. Hi there, how are you doing today? I'm good, Lynn how are you? I'm great. We have this patient, Mr. Gray. Uh, he's going to surgery later today and we need to put in a Foley catheter. He's in room 425. Do you have time to do that for me? Uh, yes, I will grab Janine to help me. Um, what size do, would you need? Uh, 16 French should work. Okay, and how would you like the Foley secure? Uh, let's use that securement device that comes in the kit. Okay, sounds good. Does the patient know I'm coming? He does. I already told him that you're coming, talked about it, and he should have no questions at all. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. I will go to the supply room with Janine, and we're going to grab our supplies. I'm going to get my sterile gloves, and we're checking all of our expiration dates to make sure that our equipment is not expired. This is a 16 French catheter, okay? And I've got my two packs of bar wipes and my sterile gloves, my graduate, my chucks pad, and alcohol swabs. All right, ready, Janine? Sounds good. All right, let's go. Got my tech sheet. Come in. Hi, Mr. Gray. Hi, how are you? My name is Shannon. I'm one of the ClinTechs today. This is Janine. Hi, nice to meet you. May I check your armband, sir? Sure. Could you tell me your name and your date of birth? Uh, it's Jean Gray, December 1st, 1964. Excellent. And I'm verifying the medical record number as well. I will also scan your armband and check your order in Epic to make sure you have an order for your Foley catheter. And I see you do. Sir, we've been asked by your nurse to put in a Foley catheter today. I understand you're going to surgery later. Is now a good time? Uh, sure. It will take about 20 to 30 minutes. Oh, awesome. Sounds great. Um, do you have any family that will be arriving anytime soon? Nope. Okay, good. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Do you have any allergies to latex? Uh, how do I know? Um, have you ever had a reaction to blowing up a balloon or using a condom? Nope. Okay, good. Um, do you have any allergies to iodine? Uh, how do I know? Um, do you have any problems eating shellfish? Nope. Excellent. And um, how about adhesive? Uh, no, I'm good on that. Okay, excellent. So uh, Janine and I are going to be uh, setting up the uh, area. We're going to first start by cleaning you. It's very important that you're as clean as possible before we begin the procedure. So we have special wipes that we're going to clean your area with. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Yes. Close the curtain for privacy. And I am going to raise your bed up, sir. Okay. Janine and I are just going to lift your covers up from the bottom here and uh, expose your peri area. Might be a little bit cold. I'm going to lay your head down just slightly as well. And we're going to get you into position simply by opening your legs a little bit. All right. Is that okay? Yep. Okay, good. Um, so first we're going to start cleaning with our barred wipes. Do you want to hand me the subsequent ones? So the first wipe is just going to be right here on the tip of the penis moving outward. The second wipe is going to be the same. Thank you. The third wipe is going to go underneath and the scrotum down. And then the fourth wipe is going to be in your groin. The fifth wipe will be on the other side. All right. Doing okay, Mr. Gray? Doing fine, thanks. Now we're going to open our sterile kit. And I'm going to go ahead and put some clean gloves on.
pull this first tab away from me. Mr. Gray, this is some educational information. Janine is gonna go over this with you when we're finished, okay? Okay, great. I'm gonna set it on your bedside table for now. I've already done the cleaning with the barred wipes, so we don't need these carry wipes. Have my waterproof drape, shiny side away from me. Sir, I'm gonna place a drape underneath your bottom, okay? Okay. If you can lift up for me, that would be great. Open up the rest of the kit, one flap at a time. I see some latex gloves and hand sanitizer, but I'm not gonna use these since I already have my other latex gloves. Okay, sir, try not to move. I'm gonna put on my sterile gloves, okay? Okay. All right, Mr. Gray, I've got my sterile gloves on. The next step, I'm just gonna put another drape over top of you. This is our fenestrated drape. Then I'm going to work left to right. What is that you're doing right there? I am attaching the sterile water syringe to the balloon port of the catheter. Oh. I'm opening my lubricant syringe and I'm going to deposit all of the lubricant the entire length of the tray because the male urethra is seven to nine inches. This is our stat lock, which we don't need right now, so I will drop it on the bedside table. I'm going to remove the catheter from its sheath very carefully so that it doesn't flop around and gently place it into the lubricant kind of twist it turn it around so that it gets lubricated to open my iodine swabs them out with my non-dominant hand so I don't get any iodine there. So I've got my lubricant, my catheter in the lubricant. I've got my iodine swabs out. So Mr. Gray, we're going to start cleaning you with the iodine. You're going to feel my hand touching your penis, okay? Okay. Let me move this uh, tray just slightly closer. There you go. Okay. So you're going to feel my hand going to hold your penis here and I'm going to start cleaning. I'm going to start at the urethral meatus with the uh, iodine swab and work outward in a circular motion. Being careful not to go back to where I started. And I'm going to do the same with the other two swabs. Okay. 
Um, if the patient was uncircumcised, I would pull back the foreskin for the cleaning and the insertion. And then after the insertion was completed, we would pull the foreskin back in place. But Mr. Gray is circumcised, so we don't have to worry about that. Mr. Gray, you are all clean. And you're gonna hold the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold your penis at a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna grasp the catheter. It is very slippery, so you wanna make sure you have control of it. There we go. So I'm gonna be careful that my insertion hand, my sterile hand doesn't touch the penis. And I'm gonna insert the catheter without touching anywhere else except for the urethral meatus. And I'm going to insert and simply walk my fingers back without letting go so that it doesn't fall out until I see urine. I see urine. Oh, great. I'm gonna advance it two more inches. All right. I'm gonna let go with my non-dominant hand, reach around to my syringe and push the saline or the sterile water, excuse me, into the balloon. And I'm not gonna let go so that that balloon stays inflated. So I'm gonna push it all the way down and not let go. And I'm going to gently pull back on the Foley catheter until that balloon is engaged in the bladder and I meet a little bit of resistance. Now I can let go and disconnect my syringe from the balloon port. The sterile part is done, Mr. Gray. We're just gonna do a couple more things and clean you up. So I'm gonna dispose of my fenestrated drape and my sterile gloves. Oh, okay. Janine, what are you doing? I'm unfolding the catheter bag and then I'm going to prime the bag by opening the connection and separating that bag to get an air pocket in there. Why do you have to do that? So it helps the Foley bag drain. And then I'm going to close it. Yes, I've heard with these new kids, if we don't do that, then the urine has a hard time draining. So we wanna make sure we vent the bag. Now, Mr. Gray, I'm going to attach the catheter to your thigh. So we don't want it to be too loose or too tight. So I'm gonna choose a spot um, about closer to, close to your knee, about mid thigh. Once I've chosen my spot, I'm gonna prep the skin with some alcohol. Then I'm also going to use a skin uh, skin wipe protectant that will help the skin stay protected when I apply the stat lock. You're gonna place the catheter inside the stat lock first before attaching it to the patient. And thank you, I see you've labeled the bag with our the date time and the insertion. Don't want to put this too far in the middle so that this specimen port doesn't poke the other leg. Okay. Mr. Gray. Oh, now I'm going to hang the bag on the side of the bed, not on the bed rail. And let it fill. I'm also going to make sure there's no dependent loops by using my linen clip so that it's a nice straight line to the bag. There we go. We are almost finished, Mr. Gray. We are going to clean you one more time. Oh, man. So now that you have this catheter in place, sir, we're going to have to be cleaning it regularly. We're going to clean it once a shift, after any bowel movement, and as needed. Um, only your healthcare providers are going to be cleaning this, okay? Okay. We have to use our special wipes. Why do we have to use special wipes? We want to make sure we're preventing an infection. Um, you can get a urinary tract infection if this is not kept clean. So you're going to feel my hand again as I clean the catheter. Wipe number one. Wipe number two is going to be... Number three. 
trying to get all this iodine off, sir. Thank you, Janine. You are all clean. I'm going to go over a few points of education with you while uh, Janine empties the drainage bag of your catheter. We'll also document this in Epic and report back to the nurse how it went. I'm going to leave this on your bedside table. The most important thing to remember is to wash your hands before and after touching your catheter, making sure the tube is secured to your leg and not twisting or pulling on it. Always keeping the collection bag below the level of your belly button. Don't uh, attempt to disconnect the catheter yourself and make sure you're asking your doctor every day whether you still need the catheter. Do you understand, sir? Yep. Okay. We're gonna document that we've done the catheter cleaning and document the output, the color, the clarity, and if there's any odor to the urine. Chan, there was 300 milliliters light yellow urine, very clear. Excellent. We'll document that in Epic and let the nurse know as well. You're gonna lower your bed to the lowest position. All right, so we're finished, Mr. Gray. I have some questions. Do you have everything you need near you? Do you need your, any possessions? Uh, no, I think I have my phone right here. Okay, and you here is your call bell as well. Oh, great. Make sure you do not get out of bed without letting us know we, we are here to help you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna check your pump, make sure it's plugged in, make sure the bag still has enough. I'm also gonna check your IV site if you have one. Um, do you need to go to the bathroom right now? No, I'm good, thanks. Okay. Um, I'm also gonna go over your plan of care, make sure you have understand your board. Do you have any pain right now? No, nope, I'm good. Oh, excellent. Um, do you have any questions for me? Uh, could I have another pillow? Yes, excellent. And um, how about your position? Is there anything else I can do to get your position better? Uh, no, I think I'm good. Okay, excellent. Um, is the room quiet enough for you? We're gonna open this curtain. Is the room quiet? Yeah, it's fine, thanks. Would you like us to close the door when we leave? Uh, no, I like to watch all the people walk by. Sounds good. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Gray. Thank you, Call Mr. Gray. Call us if you need anything. All right, thank you. All right, we'll go tell the nurse. Um, Lynn Ann, we uh, successfully placed the Foley in uh, Mr. Gray. Okay. We got uh, 300. 300, light clear, no odor. Okay, great. We put it in Epic, we also documented it um, in Epic as well and he tolerated it fine. All right, thanks so much. Excellent.